So we'll continue from where we left off last time, which is about uh, we introduced the idea of uh, linear systems. We saw how they can be solved. We saw the usefulness of the phase space picture, and then we saw how you know we were, how this the general theory of these linear systems in terms of tau and delta plays out with many examples, including that of the Romeo Julio pro, Juliet problem of Strogatz. So now you might be thinking why we, we spend so much time on such very simple linear systems. Of course, you can just solve it analytically. Why bother study all this? So, so here we will hopefully try and answer this type of a question. So, which is the idea of linearization, right? So, the vast majority of problems which arise out of real life in physics are actually not linear in nature. They are non-linear in nature and they are typically very hard problems to work with. So, we will look at how linearization plays out and how this helps us you know how uh, insights from linear systems can be applied to other kinds of systems as well. Okay, so the idea here is linearization, right? So you, suppose you have some arbitrary um, differential equation. For simplicity, I will look at just one dimension for now. So I have the differential equation x dot equal to f of x. Now f of x can be very complicated function. There is no uh, requirement that this system, system has to be linear. So it turns out that f of x equal to uh, 0 is you know points x naught such that f of x naught equal to 0 are points of particular interest right. So finally I am defining for you the idea of a fixed point which I have already used in my previous uh, discussions of linear systems. So the, but it is intuitively clear what it means. So basically if you are at a fixed point there is no flow your system is basically stuck there forever if you are at the fixed point and in 1D this is particularly restrictive. So let us look at this and then go on to, into 2D. Now if you are at an x naught which is a fixed point f of x naught equal to 0. So x dot is 0 and therefore x is going to be the same point x naught forever all time right. So invoking this fact and if you define lambda equal to f prime of x naught it turns out that the derivative of this function f of x at, at x naught gives you some information. So let us say the Taylor expansion of f of x near the fixed point it will give you f of x naught plus some delta x times f prime of x naught plus order of the second order terms. So basically to first order your lamb x dot is going to evolve if you are at a slight x away from uh, away from this fixed point it is going to evolve as x dot equal to lambda times delta x. Now whether your system is going to keep on running away from your fixed point or whether it is going to get merged into your fixed point will rely on the sign of lambda right. So if, if, uh, if lambda is positive then it is going to keep on increasing right. So the solution is x of t is equal to x naught plus this delta x naught times e to the lambda t and if lambda is greater than 0 so then you get what is called an unstable fixed point. If lambda is less than 0 you have a stable fixed point and if lambda equal to 0 this is uh, you know what sometimes it is called a uh, neutral fixed point. So this terminology must be used with, with care because it is uh, you know the word neutral fixed point is also associated with that of the harmonic oscillator where you have you know these trajectories which are uh, circular trajectories around it. So maybe we should just uh, you know call this as uh, lambda greater than 0 is unstable, lambda less than uh, 0 is stable and then the lambda equal to 0 type of fixed point right. We will move on to the case of 2D which is significantly more complicated. The 1D situation is extremely restrictive. You basically have either a stable or an unstable fixed point for all practical purposes and this uh, pathology of lambda equal to 0. Fixed points in two dimensions. So we have already seen this but the point of this discussion is to argue that in fact it encapsulates a broader set of systems. It is not necessary to look at only linear systems but you can also linearize around a fixed point. That is the whole power of understanding linear systems very well right. So basically what you do is you take some complicated system like x dot equal to f of x comma y, y dot equal to g of x comma y which you can write in vector notation as capital X dot equal to f of x. And then you just simply find all the fixed points of your system. So in here the fixed points are given by f of x naught y naught equal to 0 and g of x naught y naught equal to 0 right. It, there should be no flow in either direction. It is not enough 
if only one of these two functions is zero, right? Both of them are, are zero. Basically, it means that your system is going to be stuck at that point forever. X naught comma y naught together will constitute a fixed point, right? So this is the vector equation. And then what you do is you linearize around this, like just like what we did for uh, in the 1D problem, you can come up with a Jacobian f of x comma y is equal to is equal to f of x naught comma y naught plus delta x times dou f by dou x evaluated at that point plus dou y by dou f by dou y times delta y evaluated at that point and higher order terms likewise for g and then noting that f of x naught y naught and g, uh, g of x naught y naught are both 0, you can rewrite this whole thing in terms of this Jacobian matrix evaluated at x naught y naught and for this linearized system, you have x equal to x naught plus delta x and then you can ask what is the time evolution of this delta x. If you are slightly away from your fixed point, what will be the dynamics, right? So it turns out that the solution is very similar, right? You can write a vector solution now x of t is equal to x of 0 plus e to the j t where j is now a matrix the Jacobian times t times delta of x naught. Now we can write using the linear combination property of vectors if v1 and v2 are the eigenvectors of your um, Jacobian matrix you can write down the solution x of t as you know first of all you write your initial conditions and expand it in terms of the linear uh, in terms of the eigenvectors of your Jacobian matrix and then the full solution comes out to be just x of t equal to you know alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus delta alpha 1 e to the jt v1 plus delta alpha 2 e to the jt v2. So then the crucial point comes in here now e to the jt times v1 is a very simple object now it is just going to be a phase times that vector itself because we have considered eigenvectors of j. So, e to the j t acting upon an eigenvector will just give you e to the lambda i t times that particular eigenvector and so then your final solution simplifies a great deal and so you have this as your final solution. So, now of course in general both these lambda 1 and lambda 2 can be complex, right. So, the nature of the solution and whether your system will run away from where you are or whether it will come towards this fixed point. Now, it is no longer necessary that the origin is the fixed point in general, right? It is some arbitrary point. But basically, you can think of it as a, an exercise in shifting your origin. You linearize your system and go to whatever fixed point you are looking at, think, treat that as an origin, and then you have a linear system. And then we have actually worked out this theory of linear systems in great detail. So, you can, you know, you make use of this tau delta diagram that we already have, and where we have seen that, you know, borderline cases will give you. Uh, you know degenerate nodes or centers and so on but otherwise for all values of you know in the um, uh, for uh, delta less than 0 you get a saddle point. So, saddle points are the most common kind of fixed points and in this whole classification we have already looked at. So, hopefully from this uh, discussion you will take home the idea that you know linearization gives so much power to uh, a very detailed understanding of linear systems because even non-linear systems although you cannot solve them analytically exactly you may not be able to tell what exactly what x of t will be y of t will be but you can say whether it is a fixed point is what is the nature of the fixed point and by linearizing around that point and uh, getting the qualitative dynamics of the system out from this. Okay, thank you.